And they bless me every day. You know, there's so many places they could be tonight. You know, they could be out at a friend's house. Well, I'd rather do this tonight or that, but they're here. And they were here at 4 o'clock today to, to start practicing. And, and I just really appreciate them, and I'm thankful for the stand they're making for God. And I, I'm just thankful that I'm in the line of, to encourage them. I'm very blessed to, to have that opportunity. And now we have a very own Tiffany Porter. She's going to be speaking to us tonight. So. Exactly. 
though he had not yet learned to read. With disarming innocence and the plain spoken boldness of a child, Colton tells of meeting long departed family members. He describes Jesus, the angels, how really, really big God is, and how much God loves us. Bree told by his father, but using Colton's uniquely simple words, heaven is for real, offers a glimpse of the world that awaits us. Whereas Colton says, nobody is old and nobody wears glasses. Heaven is for real, will forever change the way you think of eternity, offering the chance to see and believe like a child. And whenever we read this, I was thinking, wow, that's awesome, because the little boy, he went to heaven and then he came back. And um, in it, it talks about how pictures of Jesus, Colton looked at him, and like none of them were right to him. And then this one little girl who had visions, um, her name is Akiana Kramer, however you say it. And <laughs> she had visions of heaven when she was like just a little girl. And her parents were atheists, so she had never even heard of God. And when she started telling them about him, they were like, what? And um, she drew a picture of Jesus. And it's really cool, you guys should go look it up. It's called Prince of Peace. And it's, whenever Colton saw this picture, he said, that one is it. That's what Jesus looked like. And so we looked it up, and like, it was amazing. Whenever I first looked at it, I feel, I just, like, me speechless. And, um, yeah. And heaven, whenever we are going to be reunited, it is, has often been, like, compared to a wedding. And... <coughs> A wedding, as we all know, is where two people that really love each other are basically conjoined as one forever. And um, that's how heaven's going to be like. We are going to be united with God forever. And heaven is sounding sweeter every day. Because this morning I was looking around and I was seeing like everybody that was, had something going on in their life, like a sickness or an illness. Or if someone had just had a death. And whenever we get to heaven, there will be no more of that. And we'll get to see everyone that we lost down here. And it's just going to be great. And I don't understand how anyone would want to turn that down. Because the only other alternative is hell. And that's going to be awful. And you're going to suffer forever. <laughs> and um, I don't see why you would want to turn that down when Jesus is offering you like amazing, an amazing life and afterlife. And um, so I've asked Kelsey and Zach and Ashley to help me. And you can take their places. They have no idea what I'm going to do. It's not bad, but... <laughs> It's like a wedding, if you would. <laughs> that is going to be our Jesus for tonight. <laughs> and Ashley is going to be... <laughs> no. She is going to be the... Like, she's going to represent us. All of us. And Kelsey... Gonna represent the Holy Spirit, who is walking with Kelsey. I mean Ashley. <laughs> She's walking with Ashley. And this is like whenever you the like the bride walks down the aisle. This is a metaphor for like our walk of life. And the first step, the first step. <laughs> the first step is the proposal. Jesus is offering you um, eternity, and you have the chance to either accept it or decline it. And um, hopefully all of us has accepted it. And now we're going to start planning the wedding.
second walk, or the second step, is where you're going to start playing your guest list. And which is where God already has his, which is the Book of Life. He has his guest list. And um, if you're not on it, then you don't get to come in. So he asks you if you want to invite any of your friends. And which is where you start witnessing and inviting your friends to be like, hey, I'm having this big wedding, you want to come? And like, they'll have you can get in. The third step is the date and venue and entertainment. Well, you don't have to worry about that because God has it all planned out. He knows when it's going to be and how it's going to happen. And he already has the entertainment. Gabriel's going to be out there playing his trumpet. And <laughs> that's when it's going to begin. And the fourth step <laughs> is when you get your dress and rings. And God already has that too. It's the armor of God. You just have to put it on. And Ephesians chapter 6 talks about how we need the sword of the spirit and the shield of faith. Well, that can be your wedding rings and your dress. And the fifth step is where you're going to send out the invitations. So you got to keep witnessing and be like, it's my big day. I really want you to come. And the sixth step is where you book the rehearsal, the wedding rehearsal, where you're going to practice for what's going